In today's video, we are showcasing another welder. This is the Yes Welder Flux 135 Pro. This is a new welder coming out pretty soon if it's not out by the time this video has been posted. But it is being advertised as a very versatile, light-duty machine. It is a multi-process welder, meaning that it can do more than one process, such as stick, lift tig, and flux core. It does not have an option for gas anywhere on the front or the back for you to do regular MIG, but you are open to the option of purchasing a separate TIG torch, and that one does have its dedicated gas line that you'll be able to hook up to an argon tank. The box will be included with the Flux 135 Pro. This is a 110 machine, so no need for 210 power. It also comes with the Flux Core MIG gun. As you can see, there's no fitting for a gas line here, and the only connection is the two wire connection for the trigger, and that's going to be hooked up right here on the front panel. Next to this, we have the ground clamp, and this one's going to go either in the positive or negative, depending on whether you're doing flux core or you're doing stick or TIG. Like a lot of modern welders, everything is on a DIN connector, so you just plug it in, twist it, and it's all locked in. The clamp itself is a standard light duty clamp, so nothing too crazy here. Moving on to the last item on the list is the electrode holder for when you want to weld with stick. This is also on a DIN connector and this will end up being on the positive side or this will be on the negative side. If you wanted to run flux core, the flux core would actually go to its dedicated flux core plug and then the ground clamp would actually move over to the positive side instead of the negative side. So try to have everything in the right spot depending on what process you're going to be using. Also included is a manual uh, spec sheet to give you a general idea of where you want your welding parameters so you can get yourself started. A couple of consumables and their Yes Welder cards. You can find all the specs on their Yes Welder website, but typically people just end up buying it on Amazon. So Yes Welder has pushed themselves onto the scene these last couple of years. They've, they've been doing a really good job of bursting into that entry level market. And this is exactly what this welder is designed for. So that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started on the testing. We're gonna go ahead and start with stick because that's the most basic process that most welders can do. And then we're gonna move on to flux core. And then maybe I'll try to fit in some TIG in here at the end of the video, but we'll see. All right, so we are all set up for the stick welding test. I've got the machine set up to 90 amps. I'm gonna be using these uh, 6011 1 8 inch thick rods. So yes, welder actually sent me this pack of consumables with the welder. I don't actually think this comes with the welder typically. The guys over at Yes Welder did send me a pack of 6011. So this is like the most universal 6010, 6013, 6011. These are like the most universal sticks that you're going to be using out on the field. But for like general sheet metal or 16 gauge or eighth inch like we're welding right now, the eighth inch diameter sticks are more than enough. Now, I'm not necessarily the best stick welder, but I think I can hold my own just doing like regular basic stuff. This is eighth inch, three by three square tube, or 0.125 if you're thinking about the decimal, and about four millimeters if you want it in metric. But as you guys can see, uh, it starts off a little rough, and that's because I can't really get it started. See, the problem is that I'm running on a generator. And because I run on a generator, the generator has to kick up its voltage whenever I want to start stick welding. And it doesn't matter what I'm welding with. This is just the way it is. It doesn't matter if I'm stick welding, MIG welding, flux core. With the generator, it has to pull up before it can actually deliver its full amps. After I get things flowing, I could just start pulling it across the weld pool and getting full penetration all the way in. I didn't actually get to finish making this pass because the generator breaker actually tripped and turned everything off. But it gives you a general idea of how well the penetration is before it actually gets covered by the weld. So, so for all intents and purposes, if you were welding with in-ground electrical and not a 3200 or 3500 
watt generator then you then you would be able to weld pretty well with the stick so in my eyes it definitely passed the stick welding test for the flux core we're also going to be using another yes welder consumable which is great because i didn't have any more flux core wire here in the shop and i was afraid that i was going to have to go buy some wire in order to run this test but they sent me their own uh, gasless flux core wire i typically like to run the link and stuff but, but this stuff hasn't been too bad i have used it in the past so this is 030 or 0.8 millimeter welding wire this is self-shielded which means you don't need any kind of welding gas it's perfect for home projects you can buy it directly from yes welder in their amazon store or you can get it from your local hardware store as long as it says it's either gasless or flux core or sometimes they go by different brand names like inner shield the mig stuff needs gas the flux core stuff does not so let's go ahead and throw this in the machine and let's see how well it fares against the same thickness of metal that we used for the stick welder and i had to max out the settings to get it to cut through that eighth inch plate but it did its job and it did its job very well the amount of spatter that was produced was very minimal i don't know if that was a machine or their specific wire themselves or the combination of both but overall the yes welder consumable and the yes welder welder both worked really really well so that concludes the stick and the flux core process testing both of those processes did really well on this welder no complaints this welder retails for like under 150 bucks online i just checked right now so if you guys just cared about those two things and you guys needed a light duty welder this is a really good option i really like it but i did mention that we were going to look into the tick stuff this welder for the 150 dollars or so that this welder costs does not come with anything to weld TIG with. But again, because the guys over at Yes Welder wanted me to test out the TIG portion, they actually sent out everything that I need in order to start using the TIG welding process on this welder, which in my opinion was super cool of them to send that. So whenever I receive a multi-process welder, they usually just send the basic MIG gun and stick electrode holder, but I never get the TIG stuff and this is the first time for everything. What really impressed me though, besides the fact that they sent this over, was the fact that the TIG torch, the consumable packet, and the pack of tungstens, if you add up the prices of all those individually, are just over $100. Like, it's super cheap. So if you pay like $150 for this and you pay $100 for this, for about $250, you can have a multi-process light-duty welder that can do flux core, TIG, and stick. With that being said, however, it's not all sunshines and rainbows. There's always caveats to everything. This welder does not have a function to do MIG, like I mentioned in the beginning. This welder also does not have the function to do a spool gun, or at least one that I have not found on the machine itself. And third, this welder does not give you the option to add a pedal for the TIG process, so you won't be able to modulate voltage to your torch. So... TIG welding might be a little bit tricky, especially with in delicate situations. So couple that with the fact that it takes a lot of amps to burn through aluminum. Aluminum might be a little bit beyond its reach, especially with the maximum amperage being the same as it would be for a stick welder, which is 135 amps, just like the name implies. So instead of trying to TIG weld aluminum, I'm going to go ahead and try to TIG weld steel. And I'm going to try to clean up the steel as best as I can. The only other thing I'm going to need is an argon bottle, which I actually do not own. So I'm going to have to go out and buy one right now. I have a full tank of C25, but that's for a MIG gun. Helium is also an option in case you wanted to use helium as well. But let me go ahead and set this whole thing up. Let me go get a bottle of argon and let's see how this thing fares. And this one I think was the best one out of all of them. Uh, it's pretty uniform. There was a little bit of contamination down here at the end that something caught on fire or whatever. But as you can see, it doesn't look too bad for a novice beginner TIG welder. It doesn't look terrible. That's all well and good, but you guys need to know it doesn't matter what the welds look like. Do they penetrate and do they do what they need to do? So if I flip it around and we look inside the tube, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to see just because of where the position is. But if you guys can see that gray bluish line, there's one along here one along the side and then the shadow is not going to let us see the bottom one and the molten gray blue tells us that we were probably getting more than enough penetration on this 16 gauge piece of steel as far as entry level machines go the flux 135 pro has been my favorite machine so far it does pretty much everything i wanted to do and then some i've got basically no complaints you can adjust voltage you can adjust wire speed it, it can weld with flux core it can weld with stick and for less than $70 more, you can start welding with TIG as well. 
There are a few features missing like gas welding and high frequency start for the TIG, but for $160 or whatever it costs right now on Amazon, you'd be really hard pressed to find a better deal right now. So 100% recommend. It's been an awesome machine for the last six months. Definitely my favorite entry level machine so far. I've got zero complaints. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher signing out.